The other was a different kind of cognitive process that was much more imaginative. And I realized that the part of that process was to extend us beyond our rational capacities. Like our rational capacity has a limitation and to go beyond that, we needed another mechanism and we found it right inside our brain in the form of an imagination. But the problem with the imagination is that it's highly susceptible to delusion. You can make up anything in there and if you believe it to be true when it's not, you get in trouble <laughs> like down the road, you know? And so we had the imagination and then we had feeling. You know, we have like the actual feelings, the emotions like sadness, anger, happiness, joy, peace, all of those. And through that tapestry of physicality, imagination, analytical process, and the emotional feeling, we finally had an understanding of the totality of what we use to perceive anything. And it's coming through one of those four realms. And if we look at our lives, we can see that every experience that we've had, we've had through these kind of sensory input mechanisms. That was really, really important to be able to find because it gave us an ability then to accurately describe what we were experiencing. And when we were pushing states of consciousness, it allowed us to be able to know what was creating the nature of that vision. You know, what were these things called spirits? What were these designs? What were these sacred geometries? How did we relate to the nature of them? And so we finally had a model to understand the nature of consciousness itself in a very, very simple map. Again, just feelings, your physical senses, your thoughts, your imaginations, your emotions. Once we are able to understand consciousness, it's like, okay, we can now create shifts in consciousness that could be used specifically for healing. When you take psychedelics for the purpose of healing, it's like a crapshoot, even for the best shamans. Right? For the very, very, very best shamans, they're going in there and they're saying, okay, we're going to give you this thing and we don't really know what's going to happen because you're the one taking it. Right? If I took it, I would know pretty much what's going to happen. After you drink ayahuasca somewhere between 800 and 1,000 times, you kind of get the map for it. You, know, you, you kind of work through enough of the, the kind of like assumptions you make from peak experiences to really have a depth of an understanding for what this plant is and combination of plants are providing. Yeah, and so with a map, it says, okay, we don't have to just throw uh, a peak experience or an altered state at this and then try to do something with it in the middle of it. We can actually create it. We could create an altered state using very specific methodology, which had been already mapped over 5,000, 10,000 years. There's all different meditative states, all different yogic states, floating states and float tanks, binaural beats, all different ways to be able to generate altered states. Burning Man is, you know, a totally different state of consciousness. And I started to realize that consciousness was a medium of great flexibility, like tremendous, tremendous flexibility. But we didn't know how to harness that same flexibility because when you would go to heal, you would find somebody that was now in a repetitive state where the illness just over and 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 over again would repeat itself. I thought that's the hardest thing to do in this universe. The hardest thing to do in this universe is do the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. Like your atoms don't even want to do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Your electrons don't want to do the same thing over and over and over again. So to have that ability, you know, proved like a very, very, very dense, very, very, very specific, very fixated map that we could then start to look at, you know, like, okay, how could we create a shift in conscious that would allow us to be able to move through these, you know, these problems? And if we could open somebody up and we could take them through a series of movements, we could start to repattern the nature of the being so that a person would have an opportunity to change. And that all we needed to do to be able to create healing was create a scenario where there was truly an opportunity to change. Right? Not a made up opportunity, but one that was real. Like, okay, I have been through these experiences and now I am feeling X, Y, and Z. And now I have an opportunity to change that if I actually want to. And so this idea of exploration of consciousness had always been a crapshoot. And what we needed was a, really a way to be able to go about it, right? People always talk about space as having this tremendous importance in shifting consciousness and peak experiences, shamanism, ceremonies, really all of it. 
And so we are also at the same time looking for consciousness, looking for a way to stabilize the nature of the space. And I came to look to understand that we had to look at what are called universal states. Universal states are those states that apply to everybody. Right? If you're going to hold a space for whomever's showing up, it better be a space that can handle whatever everybody's bringing. Right? You can't have a space that's going to break down because somebody shows up with stories you know, of like really intense things that have happened to them, like exorcisms or possessions or whatever like that. So I said, we need to look at universal states to be able to understand what everybody's bringing. And so I started to also map those. And I saw that there are lots of commonalities between all of us, significant commonalities between all of us, including the nature of our consciousness, and that we needed to no longer look at the differences between everybody, but we really needed to look at the similarities between everybody. And so the very first similarity that I saw was really simple. It's that for every moment you're alive, there's a universe. Yeah, we seem to disregard that universe and take that universe for granted while we're going about our busy day. But the universe is by far the most important thing we have going on other than our own lives, because that's where our lives are taking place. And the second one was time. For every moment or for every experience that you have in this universe, time has a correlation associated with it. And when you have a universe and you have time and you have awareness, you have a human being. You have one of us. Right? And it's all very, very simple. It's a simple awakening where we all know who we are and we're able to communicate based off of that. And once you have a universe and time and you have a being, you have consciousness. That consciousness to be alive is in motion and it moves for everybody. It moves in a vibration as well as it moves linearly around here. So right now you guys are all emitting electromagnetic frequencies and then people debate auras, but you're emitting electromagnetic frequencies right now. And right now your brain is functioning and it burns glucose as light. Really, it's like a light computer machine. And that also gives off energy in the form of heat and lots of other things. And so we are these vibrating you know, physics-based beings as well as these incredible consciousness mystic-based beings all the time. That motion is turned into the experiences of our whole life. And then, ta-da, we as individuals show up. And then I found that there's this huge war on selves. Like, no one likes being themselves, and so they call it ego, and then they make it really bad. And I was like, well, that has to end because you only get one. <laughs> you get you, and that's the one you're going to get through this incredible earth walk. And so that's the one we need to make friends with. To make friends with it, I realized there was another universal expression within us, which was the heart. And the heart had within it love. Like, I don't know why. I didn't pick it that way. I didn't, like, create it. But I noticed that we all had these hearts, and love was in our heart. And it was the only place I could find that ultimately never got tainted by life experience, duality, problems, issues, anything like that. It was like your heart would get hurt from experience, and it would, like, armor itself before the core of it would ever get truly tainted but then it would be scared to ever go there again it'd be like no 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 if i surrender to that much innocence again i'm going to get pounded and i don't want to go there you know and but i realized at least it hadn't been touched by life it was truly truly whole deep deep within us and that i knew that that love meant more than absolutely anything that we had in life because it was the true consistency while your brain could have done anything through this incredible journey, your heart deep inside was always doing exactly the same thing, moment by moment by moment by moment by moment. And that was sustaining your life and loving in a very, very deep way, beingness. Right? And so I knew that that commonality between us was the most important part to this whole idea of having a space where we could all be included and then we could all explore consciousness together. It's that if we could meet in an understanding that we are all put together in exactly the same way. We all share universe. We all share time. We all share awareness. We all share consciousness. We all share perception. We all share movement, vibration, and action. We all share interaction, our lives themselves. And we are all one complete whole being. And we all have love in our hearts. And we choose that love. Then we have an infinitely safe space now in which to be able to explore consciousness, understand our own beings, and the entirety of that dualistic paradigm that plagued tribal societies as well as our own and also psychedelic expressions could vanish. And it would be that, it would be that easy. It would just be people getting together for exactly the same reasons, which is to explore consciousness and to be able to hear.